This video is brought to you with support from my patrons on Patreon. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital and layout looks a little different. I guess I should do a layout update. Welcome back everybody. That's right, it is time for another layout update. You can see the layout's a little bit of a different color than it was last time. So let's go ahead and get into the changes that I have made in the work on the layout. The first thing that I decided to do before I really got serious into getting this layout really going scenery wise was I decided to swap out a turnout. Now, the reason that I did this is I did want to do some future proofing. I do have one offshoot for a little stub in staging fiddle track, but I wanted to have two that go in the opposite direction. So if I needed to add something later on, or if I get a bigger space at some point, I can just add on to this layout rather than starting from scratch because I plan on putting a lot of work into this layout. Now it's time to finally cover that mountain. You can see it's covered back there. But so we just took some more plaster cloth, but before that I needed to adjust the cardboard lattice a little bit. And I went ahead and just snipped out some extra sections and glued them together with my new Ryobi hot glue gun, which this is not a paid promotion. This is just literally the, <laughs> I'm just saying like, this is the best hot glue gun that I have ever used. And I freaking love this thing. And since I have all Ryobi tools, like it uses the same battery. So this thing is awesome. I then began plastering the mountain and you can see that I brought a garbage bag over just to kind of cover everything and protect it because plaster is always messy. I never have been in part of doing any sort of plaster work that wasn't messy. So I went ahead and did some protection and I would do just kind of a rough measure of the sheets and then I would put them on if I get the little unevenness and wrinkliness. It just adds to the natural look of the layout because nature isn't even imperfect. Now it's time for sculpt -a mold I have a 25 pound bag of sculpt -a mold sculpt -a mold is a lot cheaper when you buy it in bulk. This was only about $2 a pound and I will end up using all of this at some point. So it's a pretty good buy when you look at it that way. sculpt -a mold recommends a two to one mixture. That's two parts sculpt -a mold to one part water. Um, I typically will add a little bit more, but this is just personal preference of 1.75 to one, somewhere around there. I just kind of go for what texture I know and that will work best for me. And um, it's, it's different for everybody and it does take a little bit longer to dry when I do this. I have made a sculpt -a mold alternative. It is not a one-to-one -one sculpt -a mold replacement, but I've done a tutorial on that a while back. I'll link that right up here as well as in the description below. Now, sculpt -a mold is messy, but my favorite part about it is that it is extremely easy to make things look natural with it. I'm using it here for the most part to smooth out different rougher, more rigid edges that don't look natural on my layout, including my foam hillside that's near my yard, that splits my yard in my industrial area. Uh, that's an area that I completely covered in sculpt -a mold Now it's time to paint. Now, if you're using more sculpt -a mold than I am and you're using it really heavily throughout the layout, you can actually mix paint into the sculpt -a mold and that way you don't have to paint it later on. I wasn't using enough sculpt -a mold to do this, so I'm just painting it like I would paint anything else. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to tape over all of the track just to protect it. And I'm really looking just to protect the rails themselves and the uh, middle of the ties. Uh, the, the sides of the road bed I'm not too concerned with because I'm going to end up painting the track anyways. But I went ahead and did that and then I started to do my paint and I'm using Glidden's interior paint. Um, I'm using a flat paint and this color is called Fudge. And as many of you have pointed out in some of the Instagram posts that I've done, it looks like a chocolate cake or it looks like, well, fudge. And it looks like um, a mountains bar. It just, it, it, it looks delicious. Now, when it dried, it didn't quite look like that because that was when the paint was still wet. But uh, the color lived up to its name. So good job, Glidden. I shake up my paint and then pour it and start spreading it across the layout. For the smooth foam sections, I'm doing just simple brush strokes and things like that because I am going to be covering most of this with scenery. This is just kind of a catch to where if I have some areas that are a little bit, you know, 
uncovered with scenery. It's not going to just be instantly pink. And if they are, I can catch them and do that. But this will give me a little bit of a base to work with. It makes it a little bit easier to do scenery later on. Now for the rough areas, I do kind of a like a dab stipple technique. And that's so that I can get all of the paint into the little bitty nooks and crannies and uh, just get everything as covered as possible. And I'm not going for total coverage on a lot of this. I'm going for, for as much coverage as I can, but I was gonna drive myself crazy if I went for total coverage on the sculpt -a mold and, and things like that. Um, so I know I'm gonna be covering a lot of it, especially on the hillsides, I'm gonna be covering it with foliage and trees. So I just went for as much coverage as I could in a reasonable amount of time. The cool thing about paint, in my opinion, is when you're painting your layout, it's really when it begins its transformation from a train set on some foam and some plaster to really looking like a giant diorama of a railroad. So this is just one of my favorite parts is, is the paint really begins the scenic process. Now it's time to paint the track and I'm going to be using an airbrush to do that with some earth brown acrylic paint. I dilute the paint until I get it to the consistency of whole milk. That's about the what I typically go to. And I like to do that in a separate container. Um, if you do that in the little, um, the little hopper that the airbrush has, um, it can get gunked up pretty easily and clog your airbrush, um, especially if you have a cheaper airbrush like mine. The only thing that I didn't remove the tape from was the turnouts. I'm going to have to hand paint the turnouts because these are the most delicate portions of track. So I'm just going to plan on hand painting those down the road. Um, but the rest of it, I'm going to airbrush and then simply just wipe off the track, the, the tops of the rails, so that we still get good electrical conductivity. I go ahead and load and just start spraying all of the paint. And of course, the last thing that I do, since this is a pretty major step forward, including I painted the track, let's go ahead and do a quick test run. So there you guys go. That's everything that's been going on on my layout. It's starting to get really exciting and I'm really just getting rare and ready to go to be able to get everything done on this layout and start really getting into the scenery work, which is where the layout just really starts to pop and be a lot of fun. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I want to say a big thank you to all of my patrons. They are listed right here. You can become a patron for as little as $1 a month. A lot of cool things going on over there. A model of the month, the $5 level for 3D printing. And plus you get advanced notice of things that are coming out. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and have your railroading. I almost butchered that end right there. That was close. Now it's time to paint the track. And no, it's not time to paint the track. La, 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 la.